everybody. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through while loops. Um, we're working within robot C here. This is for principles of engineering. And um, really what we're trying to do is understand what a while loop is, how it functions, and give a couple of examples. Um, this is going to be probably a series of videos just because I think it's uh, going to get too long if I try to cram it into one. So let's start with this. What is a while loop? First of all, within robot C, it's just a section of code. Okay, You can see here that we have our code set up. And I have a while loop that exists between line 20 and it ends up in line 23. And what happens is this section of code between the curly braces will repeat itself as long as the condition is true. Okay, so it's going to what, what's going to happen is this: the, the code's going to run. It's going to go down linearly, one line at a time. So 18, line 19, line 20. And when it hits line 20, it's going to check a condition. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. Uh, you know, is a number greater than something? Are we equal to something? Do we have a switch that's pressed? Whatever it is, um, what it's going to do then is if that condition is being met, it's going to jump into the while loop. So that'd be line 21, 22, and 23. When it hits line 23, instead of going down to 24, it's actually going to jump right back up and it's going to check the condition again. So every time it goes through, one time through the loop, it's going to check through and it's going to make sure that it's still there. If it meets the condition again, it's going to continue to happen. So basically, we have a way here that we could set up something to happen over and over and over and over again. While is your keyword. And condition, whatever's inside the parentheses, is the condition you are trying to meet. So as long as we're meeting it, again, as long as the condition is true or the answer is yes to that question, um, it's going to go through it. Now, if it ever comes here to while condition and the condition is false, let's say that we're looking for a switch to be pressed and it's not pressed, then what it does at that point in time is it skips everything in the braces. It would jump down to line 24 and it would go on with the rest of the program, whatever I have there. Okay. So just keep in mind as we go forward, that condition is only going to be checked once every time the loop repeats, Okay, just before that command between the curly braces runs. Okay, um, So that's the first part of it. Again, we have to give it either yes or no answers. It has to be 100% clear that that condition is either met or not met, which means we're going to use some Boolean statements okay, or truth values. Things like, is it equal to 1? Or is it equal to zero? Is it greater than 45? Is it less than 90? Those are all questions that could be answered beyond a shadow of a doubt. Okay. Now, I do tell you too that in the curriculum, if you go to PLTW courses and you look at it 3.1.4, there are tables there of Boolean logic and all the symbols and the ways that you type in things like less than, less than, or equal to. It's not equal to something. It's equal to something. Um, there are certain ways that you have to type that information. That's going to be really important. So let's go to something like um, here. Let me let me think of an example here. Uh, perhaps I want to write some code. Let's say that um, the condition I want to met, meet is this. Let's say that while the value of the sensor, and in particular the bump switch, okay, which I think actually I should have probably checked this first. I'm pretty sure you use square brackets for that. If it's equal to zero, okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm saying I want the bump switch. If the bump switch, the one that I'm pressing, if the value of that is equal to zero, so as long as it's that, okay, whenever it hits line 20 of the code, so let's say that, uh, for instance, let's say that that's an emergency shutoff, okay, while the emergency shut off is not being pressed, then what I want to do is I want some stuff to keep going. Okay, so let's say for instance, I'm going to turn an LED on, green, and I'm going to wait a second, and I'm going to turn the LED back off, and I'm going to wait another second. Okay, so those are the things that I want to happen repeatedly. I'll take this little line out, okay? Um, so over here for my comment, maybe I'll just put something like this. I'll say uh, LED blinks. Okay. So what's going to happen if I just left the code with this? The thing that would happen would be this. I'd hit start and say, okay, well, I'm going to go check the sensor value for the bump switch and find out if it's equal to zero. Double equal sign is not a typo. That's how you do equal to zero. So if it is equal to zero, no semicolon because it'd be weird to stop the sentence there. Okay. While the sensor value for the bump switch is zero, 
right? That would be, be a weird place to end the sentence. So no semicolon there. And then it says, okay, if it is, it's going to go here into this loop. It's going to say, turn the LED on. Wait a second. Turn it off. Wait a second. Come up here and check the sensor value again. If it's still zero, turn the LED on. Wait a second. Turn it off. Wait a second. Keep checking. Keep checking. Keep checking. Now, the instant somebody pushes that bump switch and happens to time it, so that the bump switch is being pressed when line 20 is read. Okay, very important. If you press it here while the, we're in this part of the code, it's not reading the sensor then. It only reads it when it comes back up. So we got some timing issues we're gonna have to work out later on. Okay, but as long as the timing works out where we're pushing the bump switch, okay, then it's gonna skip all this stuff and it's gonna jump down to line 27. Okay, and so let's stay at that point in time, um, no matter what we are, Let's just turn the LED off, okay, and say it's good. Now I'm gonna come up here to fix formatting. Good way to show the indentation, how the indentation works. You can see that that's the step after we get out of the while loop, okay? So, um, you know, we could even do some more stuff with this. Let's say, for instance, that emergency shutoff was actually for a motor, okay? Um, and so let's go up here before, oh, sorry, that's the wrong line. Let's go up here before the while loop actually begins and let's add in a start motor command. Uh, let's call it left motor and let's oops and let's run it at 127 okay so what's going to happen at this point in time is as soon as i hit the start um the motor turns on whoop yeah there okay we hit start the motor is going to turn on and um, let's make sure that the led is off just in case it has some kind of errant signal coming in Okay, now we have some interesting code. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put one more line in after this. Okay, we have a full program here. Look what's going to happen here, okay? The while loop is only part of it. Okay, so what's going to happen is I'm going to start. The motor is going to turn on at full speed, 127. The LED is going to turn off. Those are going to happen pretty much instantly. You're not going to be able to tell the difference because I didn't give any kind of wait command there to begin with, right? Nothing to separate them time-wise. So the motor's going to start, the LED is going to turn off, and then it's going to check the bump switch. If the bump switch is zero, the LED is going to start blinking. And in fact, as long as I don't hit this emergency shutoff, there are a couple of things going on. Number one, I haven't spoken to the motor again, so the motor's just going to keep doing its thing. It was turned on at 127, it's going to stay on at 127. But now the LED is going to be blinking in conjunction with it. Okay, so I have a constant command of start motor because it's not inside of it. I don't want to start the motor over and over and over again. That would be weird, right? We only start it once and then we just let it run. So I don't have the start motor inside the while loop. I have it outside. But then let's say that I go through and I press the bump switch. So now all of a sudden I'm not meeting that zero. And I do it at a time where it just happens to coordinate with line 22 and when I'm reading line 22. Well, at that point in time, it's going to jump out of the while loop, so it's going to go beyond this brace. It's going to come down here. The emergency button, in other words, is going to shut off the motor, and it's going to turn the LED off. In other words, it's going to end the program. So that's a simple use of a while loop and how you can use it. Again, the timing is going to be an issue. We're going to figure out ways to deal with that later on. And you've got to understand the difference of what do I want to put inside the loop, which is the things I want to happen repeatedly, blinking an LED, and what do I not want to have inside the while loop? That would be the start motor command, okay? Now, I would need to obviously flesh out my comments here. Um, for the sake of time, I probably don't need to show you, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway, just because it's good practice, okay? Notice my formatting. Okay, you see how all this stuff lines up? The tab button is a great way to do this, okay? Fix your formatting. Make sure things are indented correctly. That's a good-looking program and a great use of a while loop. Hope this helps, and I'll see you in class.